the relationship between the UK and the US is a really special one. Yes. Deep and enduring. Uh, but there is much for us to talk about uh, as we go forward together, particularly, obviously, the ambitious and wide-ranging trade deal that right. we want to do between the UK and the US, um, but also our security partnership and defence partnership and those uh, many challenges that we uh, are facing around the world and how we can together cooperate. Right. Well, we'll talk about them and we'll come up with solutions and answers. Thank you very much, everybody. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Indeed, we will see the president of that much anticipated press conference at 5 p.m. in New York. In the meantime, he begins his bilateral meeting with Theresa May. One thing on the agenda is the fact that uh, the UK would like a significant trading relationship in place with the United States just after Brexit becomes reality. More on Brexit now to the European Economics Commissioner, who says his job is trying to remain, in his words, cool-blooded during these Brexit talks that have become incredibly complicated. And he says he's trying not to use, in his words, fantastic words earlier. And what motivated all this was that the French finance minister said it would be, in his words, suicidal to grant the UK a deal that seems better than EU membership. I asked the Commissioner, uh, Commissioner Pierre Moscovici if the European Union will make an example of Britain to ward off the possibility of more members thinking they can leave. We are uh, in, in a situation that we didn't choose. Uh, we respect the vote of the British people. We regret it uh, for us. Uh, it would be much better off if the uh, UK would stay inside the EU. But the fact that they exit must not change the nature of the EU for those countries uh, which will have uh, the uh, EU as their uh, global identity. That's precisely where we are. So, no, we are not trying to make any example. We're just negotiating in our best interest, as Madame May is also negotiating in the interest of the British people. We've made progress. Uh, we still believe that uh, an agreement is doable, but we need to intensify the talks and to uh, find the right way to be there. And in your opinion, what is uh, the most difficult problem to solve right now? Probably the question of the Irish border is complicated. I can understand it's complicated as well for us because uh, we uh, want uh, Ireland to be fully respected. We want the customs union to function smoothly. Uh, we know that uh, there is no appetite for uh, any kind of physical border between, between the two parts of Ireland. And on the other hand, uh, the uh, British government obviously doesn't want a part of the UK to uh, be uh, inside the uh, customs union. Th there might be some technological solution, we are looking at it, uh, but they need to be uh, really safe, uh, they need also to be uh, safe legally, uh, so that's a complicated issue, but um, well, again, let's concentrate on solutions and, and let's not uh, raise too many problems or use too spectacular words. Yeah, but what you mentioned there is a problem that is obviously wholly significant and has been for many, many months. There is still no solution. Have you seen anything creative on the table that would solve the Irish border question right now? We're not yet there. And is perhaps on the last point uh, that the EU is having the most difficulty. I was struck by your comments in the French press recently. You said for the first time, I'm scared. And what you were talking about was nationalism. We're used to talking about the political risk in nationalism. But why are you scared and what do you think is the economic risk in nationalism? Well, I, I'm scared as, as a politician, uh, I'm scared as a citizen, because when I see that uh, there are governments uh, or parties in Europe which are raising and which attack our uh, liberal democracies, uh, which are illiberal democracies in the sense that they are elected, Mr. Orban is, is elected, but they are trying to destroy uh, the rule of law, they are trying to destroy freedom of the press, they are trying to destroy independence of justice. This is not Europe as we've built it, uh, not only since World War II, but for centuries. And I think that we are moving backwards in our history to some tragic times, and we don't want to repeat that. This is why we've got uh, European elections next year in 2019. We need to fight nationalism. But for that, we need first to, uh, again, show that we have a, a, a 
political, a social model, which is efficient, which is also uh, made by values. We need also to deliver better. Uh, we talked about migration, we talked about Brexit, um, and we'll talk also uh, about inequalities, which are certainly the root causes uh, of uh, those uh, troubles as well, migration and, and anger. Uh, and so uh, we must be in the fighting mode. Uh, you're asking mm. about the economic consequences. Uh, that's another point. To me, that first is politics, uh, and it's about the way uh, Europe has been designed, what Europe can bring to its citizens, and uh, again, it's open society, open economy, and a very particular uh, social model, and we need to defend that and promote that. Defend and promote that as you are trying to get a deal in some way, shape, or form with Britain. Our Nick Robertson is CNN's international diplomatic editor. Nick, I am really going to lean on your experience at that Irish border. You have so many decades of it. You and I have talked before about it was always going to come down to this. In terms of actually finding solutions, is there one? Because right now, I, I kind of don't see where this is going. It seems to be the dividing line, literally a border that is the dividing line trying to get a deal. You know, from the beginning, it's been the square peg that people are trying to get into a round hole. Uh, and it's still an issue. It is, the peg is no less square. The, the hole is no less round. Uh, you know, there was some hope a couple of weeks ago when Theresa May came up with her checkers plan, which offered frictionless border. It has to be a frictionless border. Uh, offered a sort of a, a solution that would go some way to meeting what the European Union wanted. And the European Union said, yes, and we can perhaps have some technical accommodations the border doesn't have to be at the border. But all that seems to have fallen away. Theresa May herself has said there's no real technical solutions that can work. The difficulty is, is that is a land border with Ireland that is going to be the European Union's land border with Britain. It doesn't have a land border anywhere else. And the difficulty is Theresa May is propped up politically by, by uh, 12 members of parliament from Northern Ireland who absolutely do not want to see a reduction of their Britishness, i.e. Um, what the European Union they feel wants is to put a border in the Irish Sea. That's how they interpret the e European Union's current uh, position, that you don't have to have checks at the border, you can have them somewhere else. So this is still all in the negotiation, but, but, the, the, but I go back to that point. No one is coming up with any language yet that fits not just what both sides want, but the whole spectrum of people, um, politicians in her camp, Theresa May's camp, and now the spectre of, of what the Labour Party in Britain is laying at her feet. And before we move on to Theresa May sitting down with Donald Trump, I want to put a fine point on that. You know, it is no secret that the EU does not believe that Theresa May can get any deal ratified. Is that, a, are they right? Is that a clear fear right now? You, you know, there, there are reports. Uh, we don't have the details ourselves, but there are reports that the e, EU leaders have been meeting uh, behind closed doors and actually for the first time on the agenda discussing the issue of, of uh, what happens if there's a no deal. We're also hearing that, you know, what Theresa May is going to hear from President Trump, and we've heard echoes of this before, that Britain needs to get out of the European Union cleanly and completely to separate its regulations from EU regulations. That way it can get the best trade deal with the United States, which is what Theresa May wants. But this is the problem with the border with Northern Ireland. Her proposal at the moment calls for regulatory alignment, which means that goods can pass across that border because the Britain's regu you know, reg customs regulations are aligned with Europe's customs regulations. Uh, products regulations are aligned both sides of the border. And this doesn't fit with what she'll be hearing from President Trump today. She's being squeezed on many sides at the same time. Yeah, an incredibly difficult meeting going on right now and more to come for Theresa May, our Nick Robertson. Appreciate it. Now, 